His name is Steve. Dad was fresh out of high school. And he used to play in tons of bands before. He's been a noted session musician since he was 12. Since one year. I think he was. He never played, he never played the drums. Had a place in drums, by the way. Yeah. He's a guitar player. He's a pretty good drummer. Actually, Adam's a better guitar player than I am, that's for sure. And, uh, and my name's John. I uh, thought up this whole hacking concept of like, being in this parking garage and, uh, and forming a band called Uncle Charlie for no reason whatsoever. And I'm playing these songs that we had flying around from the old days when I was in a band. What other band? Johnson. Oh, where, where'd you get, where'd you get the name from, John? Anybody that, um, anybody that would listen to our cassette, soon be made into a full-length motion picture, will uh, be able to tell the differences between Johnson and Uncle Charlie. Different letters in the name. Were you really going to call Uncle Charlie Cabbage? Cabbage. No, no, no. Never even crossed my mind. It was a Christmas thing. Yeah, but I was just like, you know, at the family dinner table, Christmas time, and we sat around the Christmas cabbage, and I thought it'd be a nice thing. But you know, the hell, the holiday thoughts never last. And that was too bad. But, and um, there's no real reason why we named the band Uncle Charlie. As a matter of fact, I named the band Uncle Charlie. Adam wanted to call him Slayer, yeah. but I didn't think really it would really fit in very well with that particular approach. And we play electric amplified instruments when we play in front of folks. And how many people have seen us thus far? 20? 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 10 of whom were all around. Two of whom were impressed. So, we're going to uh, we're going to conquer the world by next June. Next question. Next Beatles, huh? No. No. Oh, okay. The Beatles are not nearly as big as we're going to be. We're going to be bigger than Rod. Um. Gosh. Next question. Are you going to follow through with the tradition of changing your name about every four songs at your next show? I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to follow through with the tradition of this interview yet. <laughs> There's a tradition of this kind of interview? Mm, no, just this interview. Um, so this is... This is all about nonsense. Steve, play a song for us. This is your guitar. Has, has Uncle Charlie ever gone on tour? No, no. Why? Did Johnson you ever go on a tour? Yes. Did you have problems with groupies knocking on your motel room doors in the middle of the night? Not till months later. After Monday. we were safely out of town. Okay. They were not nobody wanted to tell us. And? We went to Canada. We went to a foreign country. And you know the beer is warm in Canada. They sell it warm. They can't sell it for And why is that? That's a note to touring bands, you know, it's like, um, if you take beer, you can't take the beer in quarantine because it works, but you got to take a nice chest and stuff and chill the beer and never live with beer unattended in, at a Canadian house party or you'll lose it because nobody drinks like Canadian. What about Germans? I've never been to Germany. Yes. Steve's never been to Germany either. Have you been to Germany? I passed through it. You did? Really? On your way to Amsterdam? I woke up in the middle of the night and I heard a pong And there's some Italians. <laughs> and some Italians got on the train. The conductor threatened to throw them off. They didn't pay. Because mm. what's happened to the Axis, Steve? They used to be pals in World War II. And now they won't even speak to each other. The Italians and the Germans. Well, the conductor was Danish, I think. Oh, uh, he was speaking German, though. Speaking German.
speaking English. Really? The Italians didn't understand English until, so he they, said that, until he told them, I'm going to throw you off the next station if you don't pay. They understood that suddenly. A week ago, Steve was in Europe, which is, you know, it's just like miraculous to me that a week ago he was in Europe and now he's sitting here in this parking garage. Scenic <laughs> Eugene. Yeah, I mean, it didn't take you that long. You know, back in, the months, yeah. <laughs> back in the old days, you know, it used to take people months to travel that kind of distance. And now Steve, you know, he used to be there. It still takes letters months to travel that kind of distance. Because they, they do it the old way. These old guys. You know? Here's your guitar pick, by the way, Steve. Steve took that one to Norway. Can you just help me? I don't know. How are your calluses? Yes, we're going to play on soon. That's a good right there. Um, so, Adam, yeah. what, what um, advice would you have for anyone that might see this that wants to become a member of Uncle Charlie? <laughs> Don't ask for a for a a home tape from John to practice from. Cause I got he gave me that and I got all the wrong ideas and I I had to change them all around. When I was, well, we were changing too. Uh, yeah. We don't give anybody a break. poor Adam. So you know, what did you think? I mean, he, oh, he comes into the record store and he's like running his hand through his hair and going, um. I just I just talked to you know, Paul Montaigne and uh, said you needed a drummer. I, I I'm in it, but um, what did you say? It really made an impression on me. Like, you know, I just that was my usual Weasley self, couldn't pin me down to the specifics. It's hard to get people motivated in this town, you know. Um, yeah, I think we've noticed that. I think I know what you mean, Joe. By the way, my soft rock thing never fell through. I got. I had like 10 phone numbers hanging from, you know, to call me if they wanted to get in or something. They all got pulled off. With that. All got pulled off by Robert Christie, I yeah. guess. Darcy Nash did. She called me. Oh, I saw her on the street. So what does she want you to do? Audition for the Crows, Adam? Are you going to do the Crows? Mm hmm? Are you going to do the Crows? Well, um, gosh. <laughs> That's really hard to say. Um, it might be an interesting experiment. An experiment. The Crows and I have sort of a running thing going. Um, oh, really? I yeah. used to be lovers, I hear. Yeah, yeah, we, we did used to be lovers. But, uh, you and all the Crows. Yep, at the same time. But you lost out of them. Can you sing, John? You guys remember the whole song? It's not much to it. Hey, it took me hours to think of that particular part. I don't know why I rate, but I don't give that very much thought. And I keep myself neat, I got shoes on my feet, that's a lot more than some folks have got. But only of late have I begun to appreciate that that takes all my time from stumbling along. Without much distraction, but I take what is given to me. And I'm happy to be in the land of the free, so I breathe. Shoes on both their 
feel like I'm on a roller coaster or something. Yeah. Steve, 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 Steve. Or at least swaying back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of a tear drinking song, you know. You gotta get out the, uh, you gotta get out the stein and go back and forth. It makes you happy and proud to be complacent. So how did you and Steve meet, John? Or Steve, either one. It's like, uh, it's 1955, uh, Modesto, California. Steve was the staff engineer at a small radio station there. And I was the mop boy. I came in and mopped up the place. And one day Steve was in there, I came up with my mop, and he waved to me and he said, Hey, over here. And that's how we met. But nothing came of it until like 1976 when we were both in high school. And I happened to be for the first time. For real. And uh, we were both in a small town in Southern. Steve uh, was there against his wishes due to his parents' uh, intransions and his father's new job as city manager. And uh, we just ran into each other. But we didn't play in bands until like 1982 when I moved up here and forced myself into Steve's home. Remember the time that um, I left my keys in uh, a tapper down here? Came home drunk and fell asleep on the front porch and knocked on the door at like five in the morning. I was at three and got you out of bed. Something like that. And the only thing he said to me was, "This won't happen again." <laughs> but he let me in, so I gotta hand him that. So what was the first band in '82? What do you mean? The first band you played in. It was. Um, well, we didn't uh, have a name. Is there any recorded um, music at all from that period? Just on the out of print Johnson you uh, uh, The Triangular Effect. That's not out of print, is it? It's in the catalog. We took it out. The catalog would be revised. So. Pretty fashion oriented guy. Always. And uh, so he recruited this you know, kid to play drums. And uh, I just like sort of forced my way in with the song. Started contributing songs. What was the first song you ever wrote? I wanted a rock interview, John. self discussion. I remember this one. Like, you know, I, I know this one. They just like um, catapulted us into like a, a new arena. And uh, I, uh, just, you know, I thought it was the greatest. 
thing I heard. Those three chords right there that Steve is playing. Are we going to get an acoustics version, maybe? I don't see why. Do you see why, Steve? What? Do you see why we should play an acoustic version? So do you uh, have a songwriting formula or mm -hmm. E minor, C, and B? <laughs> Play the chords, Steve. Play C E minor. There they are. Okay, play G now. Those are the only chords that are valid. There, but we just don't play them. You master those, you have it made, right? Yeah. Now you can, I don't know, you can augment and diminish and major all those chords and stuff, and you can come up with like a billion different combinations. It's like Ruby's cube. three days and I've been in a summer long funk and none of us have any money. So what's the point? I'm even thinking about it right now. We've got a gig in eight days and we haven't practiced for. We've got other things to do for the moment. Who would if we can benefit by putting out a record. Do you feel lucky to get a chance to play in Eugene even once every two or three months? Would you say a band in Eugene that gets to play once every six months has made it in Eugene? What's made it me? I just keep changing my opinion about what made it me. The fact that uh, the fact that I can uh, play these songs at all and do them and, like sell them to people and play them is made it, I guess. I'm not, I'm not sure what made it means, Joe. I mean, yeah. Bon Jovi, DRI, you know, they've got it made, they still have it. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of writing the next Band-Aid single, John. It's not outside the realm of possibility, except the Jeff, that's limited to English artists. Okay, well, how about the, um, the USA for Africa, then? We're not big enough yet. Like Adam is big. No Adam one's... can play any instrument. Well, no one's done an AIDS aid thing yet. Yes, they have. Dion Warwick, Elton John. Oh, they, they did. Play. That's right. Exactly. Get real, buddy. Sorry, there's I guess tons I... Of, there's tons of AIDS things. You just don't catch them in the mainstream media because, you know, like AIDS is a ghetto disease. You know? It's like a uh, non-mainstream thing. And it's a CIA experiment. To, uh, it's an experiment here. Liz Taylor is out there, though. She's trying. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Liz Taylor. She's not promoting her new perfume. We're alive. So what do you think of Liz Taylor? I like her. She was nice over at my house last week. She's got nice hair. And I shouldn't spend much time with her because I have to work. It's pretty much bounced back from the sure weight problems of the late 70s, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, I'd have to say that. It has left a residual effect. 
It's like, um, you know, she'll always worry about that, but she's in, she's in good shape now, and she feels like, you know, she's really put a lot of her troubles behind her, she's really... She probably never she gets rid of those wrinkles, though. I read in the Inquirer today that she was, like, back in the Bay Ford Clinic fighting drug abuse. She has another drug problem. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about that, because I haven't talked to her since last week. Uh, she looked fine last night. <laughs> I say, you know, I'm not going to talk bad about my friends, except, except for, um, who, who are we going to talk bad about? Nobody. We, we love the world. Is that a new outlook, John? Yes. Actually, my new outlook is that things are totally, like, nonsense. It's a liberating thing. You, you're pretty much one of the most optimistic people I know, John. Always have been. We all have our ways to cope, you know? And mine is like unbridled up with people style optimism. Like I was telling Liz last week, you know, they may have you down, they may be just kicking you inside and stuff, but you know, it's gonna be a brighter day tomorrow. And I believe that. Honestly. Um What else should we talk about? Hey, yeah. If you could be any fur-bearing animal in the world, what, what kind of fur-bearing animal would you be? Would you be a, like a, an arctic polar bear? Because there's not many folks up there. Or would you be like a mink to so take your chances on a pill farm? Would you be a wild animal or would you be like <laughs> um, I'm really thinking about it. I don't want to say something original or different. I just really want to think about it. Well, God forbid anyone understand should say anything original or different. <laughs> hey, Steve went to Norway. Did you know that? How was Norway? Wet. Thank you, man. How are the fur bearing animals in Norway? Uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Steve changed himself to the Russian waiter. And he was not very happy about it either. Um, this is a nice intimate little set. Um, influence. Yes, musical influences. Or other influences. Uh, um, well, I'd have to say, but it's going to be seen around the Weird Al. <laughs> Weird Al. Um, Ignatius J. Riley is a big influence on me. Um, geez, I don't know. Bob Woods. Merle Haggard. Led Zeppelin. Uh, I tried. Uh, it doesn't exist. Lauren Green. Lauren Green, yes. How could I forget? I mean, he said he's barely cold when you're doing it, but already. Hey, I got the uh, I got a Lauren Green album while you were gone. It's new I, I think you might have it already. It's like really orchestrated. It's got minor notes by Dan Blocker. Lauren Green really has albums out? Yeah, several. The, what's, what's your favorite? I think the one with the whole Ponderosa game. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's got the Ponderosa theme song. Right? Yeah. Played it break in any case. She's we got a bowl of hot bowl gold hands up. Let me see the other hand words. Yeah. So did the Mind Three Sons. Not very many people know that. I wonder why we haven't got any guards down here. Probably because they, you know, something bad could happen back there. And probably good one. Just keep waiting. Yeah. So I don't know. Plans. Jeez, Jeff. I don't know. I think we'll just. Uh, 
keep on going until we fall off the edge of the world into that gigantic hole. Would you ever want to be as big problem. as, say, Michael Jackson? Like, hey, we got tired. He's not very big. I mean, he's got to be like 100 pounds. But he's bad. So, yeah, big and bad. Trading in, you know, my privacy, which I value for that kind of lifestyle. Besides, I'm not a gym on my winter. Oh, yeah. Michael Jackson. Um. What difference does that make? I think about it a lot. Ed, it's the Bel Air's the greatest group that ever existed. Do the Bel Air still exist? Huh? I like their track on the Positively 13th days. Adam Chelsea. I wanted to put their version in and got a DeVita on there, but Adam had uh, Is Mind Garage still together? Yeah. They just finished recording some uh, more stuff up in Portland. Like, Greg lives in San Francisco. And Rich, you know, maintains it. Break next schedule, getting up at like 5 in the afternoon to, uh, to uh, you know, like watch Remote Control on MTV. That's true. But they went up to a 24 track up in Portland and uh, recorded some more stuff that's even slower and more dumb. More dumb. Why do you know that? I don't know. I don't know why I exist, Adam. It's hard to know. I used to be up late at night, so I didn't have a chance to see him when it came to Lenny's Nosh Ball. But Chelsea had played with Lenny's Nosh Ball. But that pale is a great thing. Are you going to interview the penguins? Throwing Jones. Don't know them. Nice fellas. I don't know what I'm doing. There's no plan. No plan whatsoever. Um, we can talk somebody into like um, our viability as commercial artists. Like you know, sell them an album for the material. Yeah. Hey Steve, um, you think you'll be getting 1500 or two grand any time in the next month? We probably won't be making an album. No, they raised my rent. I really I didn't want to thank Charles Lynch for really raising my rent 33 and a third percent. Pretty soon we'll all be living in the windowless practice space. Where do you practice? Um, secret location. Don't want anybody to break in and steal our equipment, but we boarded up a house deep in the heart of the, the Italian area, and no one knows where it is. In fact, Adam doesn't even know where it is. Every time we have to go to practice, we blindfold him. <laughs> sort of like yeah, actually, we throw him in the trunk of the car and like, drive around for like two hours before we get there. Like taking him to the back cave, sort of. Could be. You know, they had a whole Batman-oriented uh, um, show on late, you know, the late night on Fox. It was one of the most excruciating things I've ever seen. You know, like, they'd get right into an interview and then somebody else had come out right in the middle of it and stuff and put everyone's attention. And I tell you. They're making a new Batman movie. Yeah, about time. Jack Nicholson's the Joker. Michael Keaton's Batman. What? Isn't he scared straight? Is he is clean he and sober? Clean and sober. Hey, the only place to go once you're sober is become Batman. He's the most American guy you can be. You good. think Batman's ever been stoned? I borrowed this uh, book from him called The Watchman. Watch Have you ever read it? No. Just incredible. Just check it out. Just incredible. How did you bring it? We could have like read it portions from it, like my a reading hero Rorschach. My, my personal hero, Rorschach. I mean, Rorschach yes, really, great. so yeah, really like sums up my uh, personal philosophy. You know? Life is like a meaningless pattern, and all the meaning is like conferred on us by people. So, uh, that's that's the way it is with rock bands, basically. Like uh, you can take one or two approaches. You can like just get on with it and write songs that you want to hear. 
or you can um, like confer your importance on yourself. Yeah, pretty much the theory that you know people make you famous. Basically, what people think of you is actually what fame is. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You gotta have those other folks to be famous. Which is, I think, is the main good fault of being famous and depending on other folks. You know. Mm. Put those on, man. I've never seen you. I don't I'm not wearing good sunglasses. I'd like to see it just once. Just once. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Turn around, Adam. No, it's not, it's not for us. You wouldn't recognize me. Um, anyway, Rorschach, just amazing. Just amazing guy. Really the way his life ended, you know. Yeah. Ooh. You know, like, oh, it's this comic that uh, oh, that Brett wanted me. I started reading it when I was down in California. I think everything's speeding up. I like CNN. Alan Moore's supposed to come out with a new comic pretty soon, too. Really? Yeah. I hated uh, that word. So, what good comics have you read lately? None. You brought one back, buddy. Don't try to lie to me. You showed it to me last night. What's that thing called? Oh, you haven't read that. Asterix. It's all in Norwegian. Asterix from England. Actually, uh, some of us thought about me, so there's a good comic. But, you know, outside of Reese Fleming, but the world's toughest now. What is it? What's this building? The world's toughest man with our milk man. Um, that's a inflaming character. I just don't get it. They've, they've done so much for the future, but uh, <laughs> I'm just the most jealous person. Who? Oh, I'm just talking about Alan. Some of the old But Alan, you know. Al is like, um, yeah. Al's amazing. I mean, he's just like, um, just because he can't like stick to one idea for any longer than like a day, no reason to hate him. I love that one. Yeah, no, I like him. Well, what's his thing about being a dinosaur hunter? Calling the dinosaurs and the giant elephant. Um, he likes the way they shape. Okay. He likes the way they're shaped. He, um, you know, it's all there in the new snipe hunt, the whole pumpkin thing. You know, like when uh, up in Tacoma, their second period, you know, he had, he had a pumpkin on stage. He carved the pumpkin. They're in like this giant theater up there, which has since closed down, called Community World. And he's up there, you know, and it's like he's, they're headlining their second show on a bill with like, you know, moral crux and a bunch of punk rock bands up there. And he's like, you know, the 150 kids all out there slamming, and here's like Al Cart and his guitar amp out on the stage and right, singing these songs about dinosaurs and stuff and carving a pumpkin on stage. And so that was the, he's carving this pumpkin up there, you know, and Robert's like, boom, 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 and Robert Christie's stuff. He's carving this pumpkin. And um, he finishes and he gets up to the mic, one of these, you know, kids no. comes up really politely and says, Mister, can we smash your pumpkin? And Al thought about it and said, sure, go ahead. So it was like the plasmatics, you know, except that they're smashing a pumpkin. They close that down? Community Center? Um, Community World Theater. Yeah. Jim May lost his lease at the Big Circle during the show. So what do you think the possibilities are for getting a Sun Velvet Sidewalk video? Pretty damn good. Else. You just have to show up. You just have to find a place that they'll be. You show up. Like, I think you should have been out there at the Elaine County Star Search. Talent, you yeah. know. They played that. You should have been out there videotaping that. Did they really play that? Yeah. Yeah, it's serious, yeah. You'll probably read about that. That's how the audience knows. Just wouldn't have been the same without Ed McMahon, so. uh, I think. We got a guy to oh, videotape for them. Oh, no, that's right. Came in the rain or something. Yeah. They didn't have very... I, I don't think there was a bands thing, because all the bands in there, there weren't enough people in the category. There were like two bands that actually did it. 
you know, they had this one guy, this one group of kids from Springfield, you know, like um, big hair and stuff. They talked to Al about making it. And they're all like in a band. They all had the same t-shirts on and stuff like that, the band t-shirts. And they're going around looking at all the plugins to make sure they had enough juice. And they're looking around at all the plugins and stuff, and they decided that they couldn't do it. Man, it's just not worth dragging the equipment in here. And they, they, you know, they've got these like 55-year-old guys judging it, you know, and uh, Al and Robert show up with all with their stuff, a drum set and a guitar amp. They put it up there. And uh, the guys, this 55-year-old guy, you're probably complaining on, yeah, those other guys, I tell you, they had too much stuff. I mean, you guys are simple. You got the drums, you got the guitar. That's all there is. It's like, set it up there. And, uh, Al said, you know, nobody was paying attention hardly. It's just like a weird situation of having all these people that had competed, like tap dancers and stuff, are all sitting around the stage, you know, chewing gum. And they're, and they're playing like old bridges. Amazing. Incredible. That's why I love that some go beside them. Because they, you know, they take chances. Well, they did things. Yeah. They did things. But um, you could probably see them in Eugene celebration as well. You're um, kidding. Well, they may well show up. We were thinking about like a series of longer mat shows in town, me and Al going around and playing at laundromats, like taking a tour of Eugene laundromats and stuff, and have like a list of dates uh, and times. That would be better than the screaming kids that are usually in the Yeah. And uh, just like, you know, have a time, 305, in front of the Earl Child's Business Center. Just like show up and play, try to figure out a little battery power dance. So, you know, like, oh, it's done. I mean, you know, we've been, if you, like some on the sidewalk or not, it's the material is, is himself, and it's up to you. Uh, I was talking to it's somebody. up to you. It's up to you, viewer, to support some on the sidewalk in their quest to make the world safe for pumpkins. And dinosaurs. Um, you want us to savage any other bands in town? Gosh, I don't know. Feel like, like it? It's Scott's band. Day. Yeah. I haven't heard much of it. They don't have a singer. They have a new guitarist. Scott's playing rhythm guitar and singing. They got a bass player. Um, they got a drummer. They probably sound like Metallica. Great. That's what the world needs. Metallica. Nothing Metallica. Remember that? Um, graffiti song? Yeah, it's pretty true. This is going to be sort of like, you know, maybe you guys can come. Like we could do like uh, backstage with Motley Crue type of thing because when we get famous. Oh man, oh man, look at all these chicks I got around me, man. <laughs> yeah, the fancy has a way with the ladies. <laughs> He's a hell of a singer. The total performer. You know, this is a, one of the greatest things. I'd advise anyone if they wanted to like get find out what rock bands are actually like is to check out the uncensored Motley Crue video. Because, um, that's a good question. I think, you know, if Steve and, and uh, Adam and I were sitting around here, we'd be sitting around in our house and stuff. But the guys in Motley Crue, they yeah, had enough money to ride around the back of limousines, you know, with hot tubs in them, and drive around in really fast cars and stuff. At least one of Why doesn't Snake Pit ever play anywhere? Well, we're tired. They would take a little rest. When was the last time they played a show? When we played. Or they went up to Yeah, that Hellcat show was the last time I've seen them play. They've played in Portland a couple of times since then. They're going to be playing next Friday with the Surf Trail at the Satyricon. Surf Trail featuring their new drummer, Aaron Quitta. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What beyond them? But they're gonna probably go up around Seattle and play the Central and go all sorts of other places and probably play out of town more. We've been getting a lot of calls on their single, like distributors wanting to pick it up and stuff. Because we're you know like making nothing on it. They could yeah. be, um, could really raise their visibility. Anyone feel like playing another song?